Good afternoon, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session, Rumination with Andrew. And today is October 28th, 2024. And we are going to talk briefly about Dr. Nigel Clark's departure from Jamaica to the International Monetary Fund located in Washington, D.C. Now, we know that Dr. Nigel Clark has been assigned the role of one of the deputy managing directors at the International Monetary Fund located in Washington, D.C., now, he was the finance minister, or still is, until he resigns officially. I think in the next two days or so, he will be heading to Washington, D.C. So until he leaves, he is still officially the finance minister. But who will replace Dr. Nigel Clark? That is the big question. And many rumors are swirling around in Jamaica about who is going to be the next finance minister. Now, that is an interesting question because we know that by now Andrew Honis should have assigned his, um, you know, the person who succeeds him, his successor. But he has not yet done so, even though Andrew Honis did say in August when the information surprisingly hit the media that he was going to head to the International Monetary Fund, he said that he had already chosen a finance minister. There are lots of rumors uh, and speculations about Andrew Holness occupying that position um, because he decides that he, you know, that finance minister or the ministry itself is under his jurisdiction because he is the minister or he has some role over as minister of national growth and um, development. Now, let us look at the Observer this morning that published a story. Um, which says, is it Andrew? Speculation continues about who will replace Clark. Opposition flays PM over a delay in naming new finance minister. So with the deadline for the departure of finance minister Dr. Nigel Clark fast approaching, there are growing concerns over Prime Minister Holness's delay in naming his replacement with increasingly louder whispers that he could move into the role. But there is no indication yet from the government sources that Holness is considering giving up the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation. So he is um, in that ministry, uh, the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, which he has described as the key to driving the prosperity he wants for the country, to take direct control of the country's purse strings. So Dr. Andrew Holness seems to be the head of the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation. And where are the jobs? <laughs> and where is the economic growth that he has promised Jamaicans? Nobody knows. And I don't think that he's going to be held accountable now that election or electioneering is in the air. Now, a highly placed source says Clark is to resign from the cabinet today and tender his resignation as a member of parliament for St. Andrew Northwestern on Tuesday before leaving the island on Wednesday en route to Washington, D.C. So why late? Why does he have to give up the role as MP for St. Andrew Northwestern on Tuesday when he's going to leave the following day to take up the post of Deputy Managing Director of the International Monetary Fund on Thursday? You wonder, the fact that wholeness, not wholeness, um, Nigel Clark is going to occupy such a very important role at the International Monetary Fund. What time does he even have to run the country? You really want to, when I say run the country, to stare the finance, to shepherd the country economically. I don't know, because I'm sure that, you know, this is a big promotion and he has to move himself and his family to Washington, D.C. Where does he find the time to do these things? But perhaps there are people who are helping him with all of that logistics. Now, on August 26th, when Honus made the surprise announcement that Clark would leave the job as Jamaica's finance minister to move to the International Monetary Fund, he said, and I quote Andrew Honus, the government has identified successors to Nigel Clark in both his ministerial and parliamentary responsibilities, and there will be a smooth transition in both capacities. We will provide updates in due course, and the public can expect policy continuity and a continuation of the economic achievements that his government has worked so hard to secure. The economic achievements that his government or this government has worked so hard to secure. And I would like to ask, what are the economic achievements? When poverty is on the rise, even though they say otherwise, when we have a totally collapsing healthcare system, 
I understand that recently this doctor volunteered, this American doctor it was a voluntary doctor who went to Jamaica and he was scheduled to do some surgery there on somebody who was suffering from scoliosis. I think it was a young lady, a young miss, but the equipment or the AC, some things were not in place for the surgery to have taken place. And that was a free sort of surgery that was going to be done by someone who was suffering from scoliosis. And Jamaica did, was not prepared for that surgery because of a lack of equipment and the things that should have been in place were not in place. And we have been talking about the austerity of the IMF and the fact that this is one of the effects of the IMF, that it will actually prevent governments from investing in the social infrastructure of the country. And healthcare is one. Education is another, but that is some things. I would like to know what are the economic achievements? Achievements for whom? Economic achievements for whom? For the government, for the elites, or for the masses of Jamaica who live on the island? And I would say to you, Mr. Honus, that the people who go to Jamaica, because you are now about to secure some PR company to promote Jamaica, to promote brand Jamaica to the world. And I'm suggesting to you, Mr. Honus, when they promote Grand Jamaica, what are they going to say? And I think the best way to promote Grand Jamaica is to invest in the human resources of the country and to build the physical infrastructure. Because you know who are the best promoters? The tourists. Because they come there with, or they go there with actually cameras in their hands and they vegetate, they record every nook and cranny of Jamaica. Because gone are the days when tourists are just you know, interested in remaining on a hotel, um, you know, environment on the precincts of the of the of the hotel, they are willing to go around the island. They want to explore, as it were, and they take pictures and they make videos and they see the level of depravity, for the most part, that we see in Jamaica. The roads are in deplorable conditions. The buildings are not properly maintained because there's a lack of funds. The hospitals, as we're suggesting, recently also there was a guy who was going back to, to the United States and route the airport in Montego Bay, right? The San Francisco International Airport. And because of a lack of amb um, ambulance to get him some sort of medical care, he died. Now they're saying that that was the responsibility of the airport because it's a private enterprise and the government no longer owns it. But I'm saying, my God, that the government could not have secured at least an ambulance to, to transport this guy from the airport to a medical facility. We are in a depraved condition, but nobody wants to admit it. People are suggesting that we're doing well. We're doing well. And under Andrew Honest, we are better off than under the PNP. And I would argue that that's not true. I would say that both governments, of course, were under the stringent conditionalities of the International Monetary Fund. And we suffered, Jamaicans suffered under both administrations. So I don't know what we're talking about. And I would think that the suffering has been compounded under this administration because of the pandemic. And the fact that many things were locked down and people would have lost their businesses and desperation, inflation would have gone up. Crime is on the rise. So I'm not sure what we are talking about. What are the economic achievements of which Andrew Hollins is speaking? Now, Julian Robinson, who is the opposition spokesman to, on finance, um, on Saturday told the Jamaica Observer that the delay is unacceptable and sends a bad signal. And this is what Julian Robinson is saying, and I quote, I'm very concerned that eight weeks after the announcement was made that he would be leaving and given the prime minister's statement at the time that he had somebody lined up and that there has been no announcement. We know that he has to depart in the coming week and it is almost as if this is going to be held a state secret until his departure, said Robinson. Yeah, it is going to be another state secret because everything in Jamaica is a secret. From the FinSAC report to the integrity report, everything is a secret in Jamaica and is held from Jamaicans, because first of all, we do not have a functioning press, a press that seeks to investigate and to question 
the powers that be in Jamaica. Because as you know, we know by now, it's corporate media. So the government sponsors the media, private sector also sponsors the media. So they have to be loyal to these people, to the powers that be. So they have to curry favor with these people. And they're not going to report the truth to you. Right? So right now, we are not sure if Nigel Clark doesn't even have any, you know, skeletons in the closet and what corruption charges he might be guilty of. I'm not suggesting now that he is, but he might be. But he's heading now to the International Monetary Fund as a king because he is the best finance minister that Jamaica has ever seen. Now, what they're saying, the, the truth is, this is what the private sector is now saying, that the truth is the prime minister has a very difficult decision to make as Dr. Clark leaves some big shoes to fill. I expect that after his resignation on Monday or Tuesday, we will hear in short order who the Minister of Finance will be, said Sierra on Sunday. This is Metro Sierra. They think he is in the private sector organization of Jamaica, right? He is the president of the private sector organization of Jamaica, Metro Sierra. So, so we will wait, he says with bated breath. I don't think that naming someone before this would have made any difference, added Sierra. Now, what is he saying? Of course, it's going to make a difference. Because what if the other person was being transitioned now, and if that were an effective minister, would have been able to unveil anything on toward that Nigel Clark might have done? I mean, hardly unlikely, but possible, right? And th that person should be in transition at the moment, should be the one that Nigel Clark is actually prepping for the job, right? Because he's leaving a, a, a job undone. Nigel Clark is leaving a job undone, unfinished, just like he has not finished the report, um, the FinSAC report. He has left us with an unfinished FinSAC report, and he's also leaving Jamaica and not completing the tenure that his job had assigned him. So it is the government, is the prime minister's responsibility to have nominated, to have assigned that ministry to someone else, to his successor. But I would like to think that at this moment, somebody is already selected and they are brainwashing, they're indoctrinating that person into the roles and responsibility, responsibilities of that job. Because the IMF would not want anyone to challenge the existing, the existing IMF um, conditionalities. So that person will have to be indoctrinated fully on board with the IMF. Let me say something to you. Dr. Nigel Clark did nothing. He was not that brilliant as you think. He might be brilliant in terms of, you know, putting some numbers in, but it's not coming from his philosophies, his ideologies. These are pre-existing softwares and he just punching numbers and that is what happens, right? And he tells you how fantastic we're doing. But and um, Nigel Clark has no connection to the everyday life of Jamaicans. He doesn't have any. It's not like he was doing research and he understands the day-to-day -day suffering of the ordinary Jamaican. He doesn't understand. He's totally disconnected. He's just giving you the perspective of what he sees on a software. He tells you based on the graphs that has been dished out to him, and then you believe him. You believe him. So it's time for us now to ask the question and to put some pressure on the prime minister. Who is going to be the next minister of finance? Who is going to be the next finance minister? Because what we are understanding that even people who, for investment purposes, they are not sure who is going to be the next successor to Dr. Nigel Clark. So we'd like to know who is going to be next and please in the comment uh, box in the comment section please tell me who do you think is going to replace dr nigel clark as the minister of finance thank you so much for joining i hope that you like and you share and subscribe i hope to see you in another video when next i upload another interesting and fascinating video have a great day all the best to you bye, -bye.